Welcome to SpeedSM Podcast. My name is Stefan Griffin. I'm a junior doctor working in London, UK, and a member of the BGSM editorial team. Um, I'm thrilled. I'm joined today by Dr. Fiona Wilson, um, who is co-chair of the inaugural BGSM Live, which is running in person and online on the 25th of May 2022. Um, so welcome to the podcast, Fiona. Could I just get you to introduce yourself um, to our listeners really quickly and then maybe just tell us a little bit about where this conference kind of started? Yeah, so um, I'm a physiotherapist. I've been a physiotherapist for a long, long time, um, 30 years, and I worked as a clinical physiotherapist for a really long time. Um, my speciality sport, I suppose, was rowing. I was, I was physio for Rowing Ireland for um, many years. I also worked in quite high-level rugby, um, and then I, I've been in academia for the last 20 years where I've combined the two really um big focus on athlete back pain so coming back to um how we designed the program a really exciting program Oz Ahmed who is the co-chair with me who's also a physiotherapist and I sat down and had a think about what is really needed who are the users of the knowledge that BGSM produces and of course there's other academics who are maybe some of them are purely working in research but a lot of the readers um knowledge users are clinical physiotherapists doctors um exercise scientists and other people who work with athletes and actually the general public and prescribing exercise so we were really interested in finding a way of translating the knowledge. I've got a particular interest in knowledge translation. So translating the knowledge in a meaningful way for clinicians so that the information could then be used in their everyday practice with patients and athletes. So so that has been the core focus really, to take information that's been published in BGSM and beyond and get these amazing people who've worked on these projects to come and present and almost have a plain language version, a plain language approach to uh, their presentation. What was also very important to us is that the athlete and coach voice was heard because ultimately this is what it's all about these are the people who it's all about um and we can have quite quite a patriarchal approach in our research and our prescription and that we decide is what is best for people and, and that's often been a criticism and I think as a clinician for many years you, you have this this guidelines or this research outputs that define best practice and often you think I'm not really sure that this is best practice does it work in real life have they have they tested it on the people it's going to be going to, going to be using and and it's supposed to be working on so that's really about making this information meaningful so we've um on our panels we have athletes and coaches and people who are using the knowledge and they're going to present they're going to bring their lived experience of of using this information to the programme. So we have a diverse programme, we have a diverse group of people presenting on it. We've also tried to, as best we can, be inclusive in terms of um, not just gender representation, but geographical representation. And we um, are exploring within BGSM our geographical representation of our research and our our, our clinical outputs and really there's a big move at the moment to try and do that so as far as we could and it is it is very challenging um we've tried to do that as well so these different voices are heard in the program what topics do people look forward to hearing about so we've tried to make them quite diverse so so um, a human is a human and an athlete is a human. So uh, we can have very f- um, topics that are very focused on athletes, but we've actually tried to go a little bit beyond that. So so uh, most of our presentations are about athletes, but some are not just about athletes, but where they're not about athletes, they can be about athletes because they're about topics that can influence every athlete. So we're taking our, our first um section is physical activity promotion for clinical populations and this has been quite a nice evolution of bgsm 
certainly as the years I've been on it, that it's gone just beyond specifically looking at athletes and thinking about how we promote physical activity and exercise across diseases and disorders in the general population. Of course, athletes get these diseases and disorders as well. So what has been really exciting in, in recent years has been um, exercise in cancer survivorship. That has been a, a huge change, even in the last five years, and how people have approached, how clinicians have approached managing cancer and exercise prescription within the cancer journey for people. So we've got a great expert, Anna Campbell, Professor Anna Campbell, is going to be talking about that. Um, she's got uh, vast expertise in that, numerous programmes, so we're really excited to hear from her. And then within our physical activity um, the section, we have Gronya Donnelly um, from Ireland. She's going to talk about returning to sport postpartum. I think many of you will have seen her fantastic work in BGSM, the six R's framework. And, and again, that's it's a population that's pretty much been ignored in up to this point. So some fantastic evidence synthesis and meaningful guidelines there from um, Gronya and her group. So really excited to hear about that. We then move on to the next topic, which is low back pain in athletes. And, and obviously that's something I'm, I've been really interested in where I'll be presenting within that section. And this is really going to be um, the outputs from our recent work as a, a large group of us from around the world looked at partly evidence synthesis for um, managing low back pain in athletes, but also some original research within that, that whole programme. So Kelly Wilkie, who was physiotherapist with Rowing Australia for many years, ex really, really experienced clinical physio, is going to talk about triage and early management of the athlete with acute low back pain. I, I, and I think for many of us who've worked with athletes with low back pain, it's very difficult to find good information on that because a lot of the information that's out there about clinical guidelines for low back pain big focus on chronic, some on acute, but really it talks a lot about things like comorbidities. And I'm, I'm very much the focus is not about exercise, it's about maintaining physical activity, but there's a lack of clear information there about someone who's very much performance based and, and needs to return to high level activity. So Kelly's got some fantastic information there, partly from her uh, amazing Delphi study that she did a couple of years ago. Then I'm going to talk about alchemy and rehabilitation. So magic formula for athlete low back pain, a real pet interest of mine. Um, that We did a, an evidence synthesis on, on this, looking at management strategies and, and rehabilitation. And there's lots of myths out there about what's the magic exercise approach for, for low back pain in general, not just athlete low back pain. So certainly the information here is going to be transferable. And then Jane Thornton, who is a fantastic clinician from Canada, um, one of the editors of, of BGSM, she's going to talk about the junior athlete with low back pain. So any of you who are managing athlete low back pain regularly will know that junior athlete low back pain is a real problem. And, and that's a population we often see don't actually even make their sports career um, and, and can be something that we can leave an athlete with long-standing low back pain. So we're really looking forward to hearing from Jane with that. So moving on then, we've got safeguarding in athletes. Again, re I'm really interested in this area. We've got the, we've moved into the 21st century, but we've had probably 20 good years of, of um, sport being professional, certainly Olympic sport from the mid nineties and onwards and things like rugby. And we've now got an issue that we need to think about how athletes are treated. Are we treating our athletes as a commodity or are we really putting their needs and interests at the heart of what we do? So we've got some really amazing people talking here. We've got Yetsa Tuakli from um, USA. She's going to talk about safeguarding and parasport. She's got particular expertise in parasport. Um, any of you particularly seen some of her editorials and her recent publication in BGSM about that? So we're very excited about that. And then Carly McKay from the University of Bath, who's got a, a huge uh, experience in this. And she's going to talk about 
that concept of the athlete as a commodity and what is our role as clinicians? Where do we stand? Um, are we complicit when there is abuse? What, what should we be doing? So I think that's a really important one for anybody who's working with athletes. Then coming on to the, the, um, the, the word that we have to all talk about, which is COVID-19, which has been our own lived experience the last couple of years. And we've got some fantastic lessons, actually, from this. And, and this isn't just about COVID-19 and pandemic. We've learned a lot about infection and return to play and um, risk of infection, but also uh, in terms of what happens when athletes don't train for a while, when they're, they're, they're stopped from training and, and what are the influences, what happen, what what are the consequences of that? So we've got Bob Salis. We're really excited about this from the USA. who's going to talk about physical activity, the association with severe COVID-19 outcomes. If any of you read um, his paper in the BGSM, really tells us a lot about how being fit and well influences your um, outcome from severe infection. And then transmitted, transmission of COVID-19 in sport, and that's Ben Jones' fantastic paper again, was published in the last two years. Um, he's going to talk about what we've learned from transmission of infection. And then navigated COVID-19 in professional sports. So we've got experiences from the Premier League. So we've got Andy O'Boyle from um, Premier League in England. So going to be fantastic. So coming on to our last one then, um, looking at what should sports and exercise medicine look in the 2020? So this was important to us that we, we examined equity and diversity within sports and exercise medicine because it should be for everybody. Um, so Sherry Becker, so many of you will know, she's going to talk about a gendered environmental approach in sports injury prevention. So she had her fantastic ACL paper, but there's much more to it than that. So we're going to have the wisdom of Sherry, which I'm very excited about. And then Nick Webben, who's a household name to anybody who knows about para sport, is going to bring a reflection of the century's work to date. And then... Finally, um, representation of the whole world in sport, Nanshalala Mkubuzi, I hope I pronounced that right, um, is going to um, bring, bring a reflection of, are we really inclusive? What could we be doing that we, what, what are we doing and what could we be doing better to be inclusive? Um, where do we need to be intentional to do that? And where do we need to provide support from our privileged background or, or privileged environments and positions sometimes. Um, and then within all panels, we, we have athlete representation. So okay, as we said, that's going to be really important that they bring their voice and their interpretation and their plain language output to this rich information that we're bringing to you. So again, a bit of a whistle stop there, Stefan. That was lovely to go, th to go through it all. Um, I think there might be a few people listening to that who might think, oh, no, we're based quite far away. We can't make it down to Brighton uh, on the 25th of May. But um, I wonder, this might be a nice opportunity to talk about the fact that it is a kind of, um, it's, an, it's an, both an online and an in-person conference. Um, you've spoken quite a bit there about inclusivity, um, but there's a few things that you and Osman and the rest of kind of the, the BGSM team involved in the organisation. There's a few things you've done to kind of make the actual conference itself as inclusive as possible. Um, and I guess it's it's hopefully a template that other organisations can take on, can kind of uh, look to and maybe even kind of recreate. Can you just give our listeners a flavour of, of how you've maybe gone about this practically? Yeah, so accessibility, obviously there's the in-person conference and, and any of us who returned to in-person conferences um, over the last year have known that's, that's really great and it has its own bonuses and benefits and, and a lot of that is about the interaction. But then we also... What was important to us was that it was accessible for those who couldn't get there and for all different types of reasons. So it's a hybrid conference. So our presentations are going to be broadcast and some of our amazing presenters are going to be um, broadcasting into the conference. So that's helped us get such amazing expertise as well and, and um, 
means that we're not we're not flying people in. We're, we're not even thinking about the, those miles that we're not those air miles. We're, we're not um, having to ac- access those. So we have a hybrid conference. It could be broadcast, obviously, all around the world. Pricing has been really important to us that that we have fair pricing. So for those who are in um, low and middle income. Co- countries we have fair pricing for those so it's accessible um where it needs to be so there's a there's a kind of broad range of focuses that we brought in to try and open up the conference try and make it accessible for lots of different in lots of different ways for different reasons and hopefully um yes yeah, so hopefully it is a an approach that will be adopted and we kind of know that it works now I think we we had to move really quickly with the advent of lockdowns which I don't think anybody liked but there have been positives that have come out of that and and past one of them can be that that we can make things accessible for those who can't get to Brighton essentially. Brilliant and if people do want to find out a bit more, then the website is bjsmlive.bmj.com. Um, as you've mentioned, it's a both an online and in-person event, and um, it's on the 25th of May, 2022. So I wonder if we look to sign off, Vivian, thanks so much for your time. Any last-minute messages for, for anyone who's kind of sitting on the fence? Um, no, come along. It's going to be really great. Diverse range of topics. You will definitely learn something that you didn't know already with that, with that range of diverse topics. So um, clinical pearls, you'll take something away that you will use in your practice. That's perfect, Fiona. Well, thanks so much for your time on this podcast, um, but also thanks for all your, your and Osmond's hard work um, for kind of putting this programme together. And yeah, we're really excited for uh, the 25th of May. Thanks, Stefan. Good to chat.